Hi everyone, uh, it's Tuesday, it's 19th of April, it's about quarter past six. Um, and I was, I was trading in the market today and, 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 and being involved in, in what was going on. And I, and, and I see an anomaly, which, which happens often, right? Um, it's, it's basically an anomaly between Uriabor front month spreads, short sterling front month spreads and Euro dollar front month spreads, right? So essentially, and I'm going to encapsulate in a, in a June 16th deck soon, deck 16 calendar spread so today was a perfect example right so so and i'll move on to the next slide so basically i've, I've labeled this this uh this slide have you ever wondered why the june 16 deck 16 year rival spread has not moved today despite a sell-off in the treasuries bonds guilt and a rally in risk assets like equities um whilst the euro dollars and short sterling June 16, deck 16, June 16, deck 16 spread moves much higher, um, as as you would expect, right? So why am I talking about this? And, and essentially, the clue could be looking at the FX forwards. And I know some of you trade FX forwards as um, um, you know sort of typical uh, roll trades, um, but you know the FX market is supposedly about 5.3 trillion dollars per day um the fx swaps are the biggest part of that now i'm not getting you to want to trade fx swaps but what i am thinking about is maybe you're missing a piece of the puzzle in terms of you know the trades that you're trading and you know maybe being able to look at everything that's causing some of these moves right so um, I used to trade FX swaps at a bank in the day, uh, back in the day, and you know these are very important pieces of information. You know, often, as you know, the FX spot currency moves move our products um, with risk on, risk off, um, and and there is no exception about FX swaps. So I think that you guys should be looking at them, right? So it's moving on. This is how I look at the world, right? This is how I look at the world of trading, right? So what I have here, what you have here on my positive indicators, I don't even care about volume, right? What I care about is direction, momentum. That's what I care about. So what I've got here, this dividing line where my mouse is wiggling around, are my positive indicators are the five ladders and they're very small ladders, right? If you see what I've put on there. And then I've got my um, negative indicators, right? So what what would I be? My positive indicators are, um, for instance, I've got my 10-year uh, treasury note future. I've got my Australian 10-year note future. I've got gold, Comex gold, outright. And these are all outrights, by the way. Then I've got the Bund. And then I've got the gilt outrights. Okay, so all typically highly correlated products. And then on, on the right hand side, I've got yen dollar. Remember, it's not dollar yen, if you, so it's quoted yen dollar. Um, I've got um, the enemy uh, copper price. I've got Brent front month. I've got an Aussie dollar FX, so Aussie US dollar June 16 outright. And and then I've got the mini S and P, right? So, so why have I called them positive and negative indicators, right? So, essentially, what I'm looking here, I'm generally looking to the right hand side to give me information about the left hand side, right? So I've got my dollar yen, I've got my enemy copper. So I've got my dollar yen. I've got over here on the far side the Aussie. Um, so I've got my currencies there. So basically, um, why I picked yen and, and Aussie? Yen is notoriously known as a safe haven currency. Um, if people are buying um, the the yen, um, you know, generally that would be a case of a safe haven trade, right? So what I've got here on the on the on the left hand side, I've got my treasuries, uh, my Aussie, uh, my gold guilt and burn, right? So this is why I've lined this up here. It, we're talking about June 16, deck 16, right? So as you've gone through today, it's quite clear, you know, you've, you've had a sell-off in, in, so what I'm gonna look here, so what I've got here, 
I've got my FX swaps, which are my FX calendars on the top on this ladder here. Then I've got three ladders where my mouse is, right? So I've got the June 16, deck 16, Uriah Boss spread. I've got the June 16, deck 16, um, that is the short style in spread. And I've got the June 16, deck 16, Uriah spread, right? So on that previous slide, we've had, um, we've had a little bit of a recovery in the last hour, but we've had a treasury sell off, equities up, energy up, Brent up, Aussie up. So we've had, you know, kind of a, a, a risk on day, right? So as you would expect in a risk on day, you've seen the front month, kind of, you know, the white spread. So June 16 to deck 16, you've seen those, they're going up, right? So as the long end is going down, the front end of the curve can't keep up with that. So you feel steepening in the curve. Now think about what's happened, right? So you've had a sell off in the bund. Right, so you've had a sell off in the Bund, yet what's the difference? So if you look here, quite clearly you've got a mid price of about minus three and a half in June date arrival. Short sterling spread has gone up all day with the sell off in the outrights, and Euro dollars has gone up all day. The June 16 deck 16 has gone up all day um, with the sell off in the treasuries. So you've got risk on, uh, you've got long end selling off why or not necessarily why because people may think oh well it's because of ecb on thursday no it's not you look so essentially your if you if you've got if you if you imagine this is a triangle so if you've got the triangle you've got your free you've got your six months brand due 16 deck 16 you've got your long end outright and when that long end outright is going up your spread goes down, right? So, and, and when your, your, your long end outright, in this case would be the burden, stops going up, and then it starts going down, your spread starts to recover a bit, right? So that's how we look at the market. But if you'd have traded today, there were times when you had that a little bit, but compared to short sterling and compared to Euro dollars, it was very different, right? So, and here's, Thinking about that triangle, you're looking at the market in a you know, June 16, deck 16, and the long end, but I'm adding that third leg of the triangle, right? So, and it's, you know, if you think of a tripod, it's always more stable with that third leg. So, what you've got here on this little chart, it's very difficult to, um, th these are very, these are traded extremely infrequently outside the rolls the FX swaps that is, right? So FX swaps are your FX calendar spreads. So this chart here is a spread of the June 16 euro to the March 17 euro, right? So it's a nine month FX swap. I picked nine month just so that it, it, it exaggerates the move, right? And, and it, well, it didn't exaggerate the move. It told the story of what was happening. So you've got your eyeball spreads not going up in a sell-off in the Bund, and you've got Euro dollar spreads going up in a sell-off in, in the Bund and the Treasury, right? As per normal. But what you see here, right? So this move, this this is the line, the black line, right? So, and I'm probably colorblind and that's blue, but let's, as you sell off in, in the, this big move here, in the down move in FX Canada spreads and FX swaps, it's a big move to the left-hand side of uh, FX swaps with the Fed talk far more dovish, and that's pushed these FX calendar spreads much lower, right? So what we had today, if you look here, all the way in this peak here where my mouse is hovering, this was essentially, well, this was when um, the, the infamous FIMC meeting where they talked about, um, you know, don't get overexcited about rate hikes, right? So this was here ever since that point in time, you know, the treasuries rallied, this treasury rally has caused this FX swaps to come all the way down to here. Now today, some of your OSTC traders bought this price down here, right? They didn't know it was gonna be the bottom and it might not be the bottom, but what happened was you've had a big resurgence in the value of this product. Now, if you think, well, this is gonna be new to you, right? But 
What I can say to you is that if the Bund and the Treasuries are going down, let's say they're going down at the normal rate, and you've got a rally up in the FX swaps, in the FS, this, this June, March Euro spread, you will see a difference in behavior between this June 16, Dex 16, Euribor spread and the Euro dollar spread. And remember, we're always talking about net change. So we're always talking about the difference. It may be that the Euro dollar calendar spread June 16, Dex 16 was five ticks higher. And the Euribor spread was maybe one tick higher. But the net change, the difference in the two will be the same, right? In this instance, Euribor June 16, Dex 16 barely traded higher than minus three and a half. Um, and with the with the sell off in in the treasuries, um, but the euro dollar June sixteen deck sixteen was rallying right. So what I can give you is a clue um, that and and maybe plant a seed that you can come back to me and say we'd like to see this a little bit more. The problem being is you know these things are happening in slow motion. You think normal stirs this is slow motion, but for those trading in this market, it wasn't slow motion, it was what was driving this market. And I know a lot of you trade your I know I know a lot of you trade short sterling, and a lot of you trade euro dollars, right? So if you think about it, this impacts every one of you, right? So again, this moved probably around 25% of this fall down move. So your rival didn't rally, with the bun selling off and the treasury selling off. But what you saw was, I haven't got the chart to show you, but actually the short, the sterling FX swaps, they're little unchanged, they're a little bit higher. Um, nothing like 25% move from the bottom, right? But they're, they're, they're basically unchanged from the bottom. And such, the short sterling could rally up, the short sterling June 16, deck 16 can rally up. This is a really important piece of the puzzle for you guys. So what we have here, this is a, this is a, a look at the Reuters screen. Um, we can replicate this um, in, in CQG, so we, we can do that. But the point was, what I wanted to show you here, look where my mouse is. So this is the Euro dollar, uh, Euro dollar FX swaps. These are the, actual values of the OTC FX swaps. This was traded at, if you look where my mouse is, right, so the June, March. This was trading 111.111.5, right, this morning, and now it's 114.17. In that example, if bonds are down, treasuries are down, you will see a an appreciation or, or basically the Euribor June 16 debt 16, June 16 debt 16 spread will never be able to catch up with the Euro dollar June 16 debt 16 rally. And if it overshoots, it's certainly worth a sell. Uh, but I think this is a really important part of the puzzle that you're not seeing. So please, any questions, um, please send me uh, an email and I'll be very happy to jump on TeamViewer and, and run through some live trading. Uh, I, I prefer to do live um, rather than sit there and, and, and do the video on my own. So please let me know. Thank you.